Tapos, uh, I had to pray and discern kung, kasi parang pakiramdam ko, I had to be in the house. So, I, I had to pray whether that was the direction where the Lord wanted me to go. And lahat ng leadings, doon papunta. So, nung, ayun na, so nung nag-resign ako, eh, pareho kami nang kinikita. Cut in half ka agad yung sweldo. <laughs> Pero, yun, pinagkasya namin. And the Lord naman din blessed us. Kasi, napagkasya namin. At saka, nagkaroon ako ng time para alagaan yung naging limang anak na. Actually, hindi po ito subject ng aming sharing pero mahalaga po na tuktuman yung kanyang sinabi na napakamahalaga po na especially when you're starting a family you're really praying and asking the Lord what is it that you want us to be able to do and share with our with our family with our children when especially when they're you know that eventually it's just a matter of time they will grow up so what is the right kind of environment that you will provide for them and for that, what are your personal circumstances? So, mahalaga po na itinudulog ninyo sa Panginoon kasi lalo niya siya bilang may bahay ko. Sabi niya, Lord, ano gusto mo para sa akin? Upang mapangalagaan ko yung mga biyaya niyo sa amin na mga anak. And it's very important, gaya ng sinabi niya, na in fact, nung kami po ay kinasal, mas malaki po yung kanyang sweldo sa akin. Up to the time that we made the decision on the basis of our discernment that the Lord was calling her to take care of the house. Even though at the time, hindi naman namin alam na magiging lima sila. <laughs> so we had no knowledge of that, but the Lord knows best and the Lord drives straight with crooked lines. Hindi po ba? So, kahit na, and it takes a lot of faith, that's why you need to pray for it. Because kung siya, she is earning about 60% of our collective income, and we felt that the Lord was calling her to stay home, that was a very life, uh, that's a very essential decision, and it was crossing, you know, that threshold of faith, and believing that the Lord will provide. Kasi, kung halimbawa, totoo naman, at that time, ang kinikita ko, I think, was 2,200. No? And she was earning, I think, a very, very big 2,700. <laughs> Eh, biro mo, mawawala yung 2,700 na yun. But that's what we felt the Lord was telling us to do. So, sabi nga po sa Amoris Leticia, ito po lang po, ikukot ko yung pula. Parents need to consider what they want their children to be exposed to. And this necessarily means being concerned about who is providing their entertainment, who is entering their rooms through television, electronic devices, and with whom they are spending their free time. Yan po, sa larangan lang po yan ngayon ng TV, ng, ta ng tablets, you know, that nung maliliit sila, nung kami po bagong kasal, wala pa naman yung mga yan, TV nga lang ang kaming kalaban. But still, it is an important decision, not only what to avoid, what to protect them from, pero ano yung i-re-replace namin. Kasi kung tatanggalin nyo yun, ano yung isa-substitute ninyo? At yun po yung mas mahalaga. So, ang sabi nga po sa Biblia, from the Deuteronomy, you shall teach them diligently to your sons and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise up. So it's not only protecting our children throughout our lifetime journey with them against the, the bad societal influences uh, at the time, well, we always say media, Kasi ang media has taken many forms dati, ang media, TV, radio, print. Ngayon, ang media, napakalawak na. Hindi mo na masasaklaw ang lahat, hindi mo na makokontrol lahat. But that was very important. So, sa tingin natin, katulad niya, <laughs> no? many, many years ago, that's how they looked. No? So, when this girl was only one year old, she was less than three, she was less than five, she was less than eight, and he was less than eleven. But lahat sila maliliit, no? Lahat sila maliliit. Pero bakit po mahalaga na purposeful and intentional yung parenting in terms of protecting them? Because balang araw, sa ayaw nyo sa gusto, magiging ganyan sila. So what is your responsibility? Hindi naman pwedeng 
Eh, lang kita eh. Eh, sige, kasal tayo. Eh, anak tayo. Sige, trabaho ko. Sa bahay ka. Ako, sige, sige. Sige, sige. Uy, 60 na tayo. Retire na tayo. Para na sila sa buhay nila. Hindi naman po yata ganoon. Hindi po ba? Because we are stewards. We are stewards. Not materially, only, but more importantly, spiritually. Because that's what we are tasked to do. And that is what the Bible says. So, It's so important that we ask ourselves, paano natin sila palalakihin? So, yun yung katanungan na tinahak namin mula sa umpisa hanggat sa ngayon. Kasi bagamat yung dalawa po, may asawa na naka, nakabukod na po sila, yung tatlo nagtatrabaho, pero sa akin po nakatira. And I still have parental influence over my married son. And I still have parental influence over my married daughter. Eh kasi, ganyan, tapos balang ano, kanya na din sila. So, ang mamanahin ng apo ko ay kung ano minanan niya sa akin. Hindi po ba? So, how I will, what legacy will I leave with my Marfori family is what legacy I will leave to my children. What kind of parent he will be? Look at him there. This is him now. He has responsibility over him. But how did I exercise my parental responsibility over him so that he becomes closer to where the Lord wants him to go? And how did we care for her so that now that she has this, may tatak po ng Christian home and how we, how we raise them. And that's why it's very important. Okay? All right. Okay, so I'll just share what we did when the kids were young. Yung panganay namin, our eldest son, uh, at that time, hindi syempre nasa bahay lang ako. So every time he comes home, alam ko yan at the end of the week, um, ano siya, meron siyang unit test. So from Monday to Thursday, lahat ng mga lessons niya, nire-review namin every night yun. Pero by Thursday evening, all the things that he took up from Monday to Thursday, ginagawa kong test. Kaya pag Thursday evening, meron na siyang exam sa akin. Tapos, pagdating ng Friday, kabisado na niya. Kasi from Monday to Thursday, covered na namin ng Thursday evening. So pag nag-exam siya ng Friday, okay na siya. So that's how I would spend my time with the kids. Kasi first and foremost, importante yung pag-aaral over TV. So, yung mga anak namin, lumaki na Monday to Thursday, no TV. Friday, if you finish your homework for next week, pwede ka na mag-TV ng Friday evening. Pero pag Friday, hindi ka pa tapos. Saturday, hindi ka pa rin pwede mag-TV hanggat hindi tapos lahat ng homework. Uh, pag weekends naman, their TV usage and computer usage kasi computer was just starting at the time eh. So thrilled na thrilled sila pag meron silang computer time. But syempre kinokontrol ko rin yun. How would I control it? Bumili ako sa National Bookstore. Alam niyo yung ticket sa, sa Peria? Kaya yung sa movie. Diba? That's one roll of tickets. Every week, I give each child five tickets. Okay. Nakapin mo yun. I signed the back kasi baka mamaya alam mo na. <laughs> so, nakapirma yun. And then, each ticket is good for half an hour of TV. So, if they're... Oh, sorry. <laughs> so, if they want to finish all five tickets in one go, basta tapos na sila sa homework, that's fine. But that's all you get for the week. Okay? So, no computer, no TV until Friday if you're done or weekends when you finish your homework. In fact, nakakatawa kasi, nahanap ko yung tira ng tickets. <laughs> Tapos, TV9, may Viber group kami ng family. Sabi ko, naalala niyo ba to? Yes, mama! Sabi nilang gano'n. O, sino may gusto? Siyempre, kinuha ng anak ko. <laughs> Gagawin din daw niya dun sa anak niya. <laughs> Tapos, pagka yung ano, when they watch TV, uh, binabantayan namin na medyo pag-sensor hindi nila makikita. So, oh, close your eyes, it's violent. Oh, pikit naman sila. Close your eyes, you know, it's not good kasi medyo sexual lang undertones. Uh, so, lumaki yung son ko na gano'n, na nung dumating yung kapatid niya, 
minsan hindi naman ako pwedeng all the time nasa kwarto when they watch TV. So, ibibigay ko dun sa lalaki, sabihin ko sa anak ko, bahala ka na kay, kay Ana ha, you make sure that she knows she doesn't see anything that she's not supposed to see. So, pagka medyo nagbabarila na, <laughs> Close your eyes. You're not supposed to see. It's violent. <laughs> so anyway, um, cell phones. Ngayon, di ba? Nakikita natin lahat ng mga bata may hawak ng cell phone. Eh, at that time, nung lumalaki sila, medyo dun pa lang din nagiging uso yung cell phones. But since uh, when they were going to school, their classmates had cell phones at that time. Pero sila, We only allow them to have cell phones when they hit high school. And yung cell phone, an pa naman, analog pa naman at the time, di ba? Wala pa mga browsing, browsing. So it was actually easier for us to control it, unlike today. But at that time, uh, their phones were used mainly for, okay, you let me know when you're done na, sunduan time, or when they're in the mall with their friends, oh mama, you can get me here, or we're here, kanya. That was the only use of the cell phone, really. Uh, we encourage the use of the landline. Okay. Okay, but we also know na ngayon po, napakahirap po i-control. Kasi nga po, napakadaming sanhi ng influence na hindi natin nababantayan. Ngunit base po doon sa binahagi ni Louie, it is so affirming, brothers and sisters, that When we, because we were purposeful, we were intentional, deliberate, that we protect them from these versions of society, of media influence at the time. Version, let's say, wala pang namang Facebook noon, wala pang uh, Instagram, wala pang Twitter, no? Yung version na yun, na-protect sila so much so that brothers and sisters, nakakatuwa because they have a 14-year-old kasi. No, anak ng kuya ko, na sila mismo, yung mga anak ko, sila yung naririnig ko, minsan nag-uusap sila, sabi nila, she should not be watching that. She should not be watching that. She should not be accessing that site. Because that is not good for her. She's not yet 18. So, brothers and sisters, God, God honors our desire to help our children grow up to become men and women after His own heart. But we need to be very purposeful. Because hindi naman natin makokontrol lahat but we start them when they are young. Ngayon nga po, mga kapatid, I'm sure you are aware, pornography is just one of the least that can cause them hurt. You know, some time ago, I saw this uh, website, kasi maliban dito sa Commission on Family, I'm also very active in our community on family life. And so I'm always looking for things that can cause children to be led astray. May nakita ko isa, I was looking, I was just looking, nag-google ako, nakita ko yung isang vlog ng isang nanay, sabi niya, pornography is not the most damaging thing that you can, your child can pick up from here. Ha? Huh? Sabi ko, what is that? What can be more damaging than pornography? So nag-click ako, binasa ko yung vlog ng isang nanay. Ang ninanarate niya is where a particular site today I think it's music.ly.com, I cannot remember. Nung nag nung, when I changed my phone, I reformat, I just need to go with that. There, I should have shown you that the reason why pornography is not the most damaging there or hurtful is because children can be led to self-hurt. And alam po natin yan, marami po ngayon na mga bata, napakataas po ng incidence ng self-hurt. No? So, it's very important that when we were bringing them up, we were be very discerning and we were purposeful. Pero, habang lumalaki po yung mga bata, lalo na po sa generasyon ngayon, they're very smart, they're very uh, grounded. Sabi nga po, they are, uh, if you've heard this term before, si Doktora, siguro narinig nila, ang bago daw terminology sa generation ngayon ay VUCA. No? VUCA. V-U-C-A. What is VUCA? They're volatile. They're unpredictable. No? Nakalimutan uh, ko yung C. And then yung A is they are... Uh, pati yun, nakalimutan ko na. Hindi <laughs> na nila yun ang D. No? Ambiguous. 
They're volatile. They are. They are um, unpredictable. I forget the C. The C. The A is ambiguous, and the D is digital. They are digital. So the, the youth today are vocal. So we need to be purposeful. Nakakatuwa mga kapatid kasi because we embrace them that way, even today, they respect that. Brothers and sisters, it's what the it's the patterns that we establish in life when they are young and which we continue para consistent tayo. Then they will not say, ganun ka lang, ganun lang pala kayo, ma, pa, nung bata kami. Ngayon na matanda na kami, hindi pala. We enforce it. Hindi kayo maniniwala mga kapatid. I have a, we have a 23, a 25, and a 20, almost 27-year-old. They're three. Unmarried now. Kasi yung dalawang married na. Nasa labas na po sila ng bahay. Nakabukod. When we go for lunch or dinner, they don't bring their phones. Kaya po ba? Kaya. How? Because we established a spirit of dialogue. We make sure that we protected them when they were young. They know why we're telling them, bawal ang TV, pagka hindi patapos ang homework, bawal yung site na yan, kasi hindi yan yung kabubuti sa inyo. Kahit na matanda na sila, they honor that. They honor that. But we can always ask ourselves, therefore, ano ba yung values, principles, ano yung virtues na gusto natin ipamana sa kanila? We need to become vigilant. We need to engage in discussions. That's why you pong one-on-one time with them when they're young is so important. So that when they grow up, they know that they can communicate with you, they will open up to you, and they will also be accepting of your dialogue with them. We talk about the shows and the movies that they watch, ano yung natutunan nila, ano yung maganda, ano yung hindi maganda, and what was good and what was not. Alibawa, nung araw, ah, uh, I don't know how many of you remember kasi nakatatlong movies na to sa isang series, no? You have, I don't know how many of you will remember it started with The Lion, The Witch, and The Wardrobe tapos nasundan ng Narnia no? tapos yung iba I was also a bit disappointed because um, I heard that some parents because they are not very discerning sabi nila, ay huwag niyo panunuorin yan kasi it's all about bad things or you know, uh, buro na yan, mga fantastic lang yan it's about beasts and monsters and all that then they did not realize that it was written by a Christian writer it's a written by a Christian writer C.S. Lewis, one of the most revered Christian writers and the lion there, Aslam, is actually Jesus Christ so when he killed himself, he submitted himself, is actually the representation and symbolism of Christ dying on the cross so that everyone else will be redeemed. So, pati yun, sabi ko, pag alam natin yun, may tuturo natin sa mga bata, tapos pwede natin ikwento, at saka pwede natin sabihin yan, panuulin nyo yan. Because that one is, is good. Okay. In Isaiah, we read, a father tells his sons about your faithfulness. So it's very important that we not only protect them against what they should not learn, but we tell them about what they should learn. And where do they learn? They learn from Christ. They learn from the virtues and the values. We always ask ourselves, anong ituturo natin? Paano natin ito stress And how do we establish this in family customs and traditions? Because kung ano po yung pisahan natin nung maliit nung malilit sila and we can continue that, maniwala kayo sa hindi, itutuloy po nila yan pag meron din na po silang sariling mga pamilya. No? So ngayon, kahit na po yung mga anak namin, matatanda na sila. They join us in our family religious traditions. Kahit na po, in fact, many of you have seen them here on a Sunday. Sometimes they suddenly come here on a Sunday. Nung Mother's Day, sinurprise nila si Dewey. There was a time, all three of them, meron po silang kanya-kanyang mga boyfriend. Yung isa po ngayon, walang boyfriend, so dalawa lang po my boyfriend. But you know what? On Sundays, they stay home. They respect Sundays. They go out on Saturdays, but on Sunday, it's a family day. Kaya kahit na po kami, alam nila, nasa community po kami sa umaga, nasa pipap kami sa hapon, minsan pagising po nila sa umaga, wala na kami sa linggo ng umaga. Ang uwi po namin galing sa PIPAP kasi ang tanghalian po namin, madalian, galing sa community, tatakbo dito. Pag uwi po namin, from 3.30 or 4 o'clock na, but they are at home because they know and we ask them, Sunday is family. Alam naman nila we are about God's work, but they stay home with us. Okay. I think this is you. 
Ah, uh, ito yung mga magaganda at naging effective na paraan ng pagpapalaki sa mga anak namin. Spending time with them as they were growing up, which was the main reason nga why I quit my job to stay home. So, important sa akin, important yun kasi uh, staying home when you see something like a rude attitude or yung ugaling hindi maganda, you can correct it right at, the moment, at that moment. Uh, you nip it at the bud, sabi nga nila, yung bulaklak na hindi pa bumubuka, still a bud, you take it out. If it's not a good character, you take it out. Hindi natin maasahan yan with the helpers. If you have helpers, you can leave that responsibility to the yayas. Kasi hindi naman nila anak eh. Tatama rin sila or bahala na, di ba? So, at the expense of your child, uh, you risk that if you don't correct it at the moment. So, that, I felt na that was a very important uh, reason for me to stay home. Yung mga anak ko, lumaki, they grew up wanting stories. Kasi in the, in the house, we opened the lines of communication. So they knew that whether it's good or bad, they can come to us. Whether they'll be scolded or not, they can come to us. So nighttime was something that they look forward to. Kaya lang, syempre, madali. We had one kid. I can tell his favorite story, which was Jack and the Beanstalk. Every night yan, Jack and the Beanstalk. Habang nakahiga kami, tapos may ano yan siya, nakikiliti sa chan. Sa chan. Okay. Tapos, they have their night prayers na, night prayers ko pa yun, when I was growing up as a child, I taught them the same night prayers. In fact, nakakatuwa kasi, um, a couple of days ago, I was talking with my 27, almost 27 year old daughter. Out of curiosity lang ba, sabi ko, do you still pray? Sabi niya, yeah. You say your night prayers? Yes. What night prayers do you say? The prayers that you taught us when we were young. So, okay. yun pa rin yung prayers niya. Uh, kasama na dun yung praying for, then they name their mga ninos and ninangs, the family members, anyway. So, it was easy spending time with my son because he was only one. When my daughter was born, medyo manageable kasi there were two. Uh, I would put each one to sleep or sometimes hati kami, he'd take the boy, I'd take the girl. My girl naman, uh, she likes girly stories like 12 princesses, yung mga, hindi, mga classics illustrated uh, comics. Pero sa kanya, iba na naman yung, hindi ko na maalala eh. Basta iba naman yung gusto niyang area ng kilite. She wants to be tickled in another part of her body. Here. Nung naging tatlo, medyo mahirap na. <laughs> Kasi I only have two hands, the left and the right. <laughs> so, at that time, eh, I breastfed all of them. But I was breastfeeding my third child. So, paggabi, gusto nila kinikilite, di ba? So, eto yung ganito kami. Uh, how ako, nakaupo ako, nag-breastfeed ako. Yung isa, nakaupo, nakahiga sa kama, tinitikal ko. Yung isa, nakalatag sa baba. <laughs> o, oh, diba? Covered lahat. Tapos nung naging four, naging five. Uh, okay, then maybe I should do something else. So, ang nangyari, uh, I would set one day each, five days in a week, five weekdays, diba? Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Tama, tama. Problem was, when we have prayer meeting. O, di kunyari, prayer meeting namin Tuesday. E di yung, those, the, the person assigned on Tuesday will not have his night time, diba? His night kiniti, his night story. So, pagdating ng Wednesday, Sisingilin ako. <laughs> eh, Siyempre magagalit yung Wednesday, yung Wednesday, di ba? So it worked for a while, but then I had to find another way. So what we would do is he would take out my son, mag one-to-one sila, kakain sa labas, kanya. Ako naman, I would do the same with the girls. Medyo mahirap lang kasi four girls eh. So I would try to take them out regularly. Ngayon na, bigla ko naalala yung one-to-one namin noon, hindi ko pa nagkatawa. Takala <laughs> <laughs> nung girls. Years ago, um, another way of spending time with them was cooking. 
Kasi feeling ko, wala namang ibang magtuturo, if not me. So, summertime, lalo na with the first two kids, my son and daughter, I would teach them how to use the, the knife, how to use the uh, abridor, yung can opener, uh -oh. and then how to cook simple dishes, spaghetti, how to make sandwiches, things like that. Na hindi ko naman alam na up to now na carry over yung desire kasi you teach them and then they forget, diba? But now that they're both married, my son is the cook and my daughter is the cook. So, uh, it, it's safe with them. And then, uh, one thing also that we were able to do as a family was to pray the rosary daily. Yun nagagawa talaga namin when they were younger. So even the yaya would join us. And then when we're out, let's say we have a party or we pray a religion coming, we just tell them, just pray the rosary even without us. So that was something that we were able to do. Now, it's a little bit more difficult because may kanya-kanya schedule. They come home at different times of the evening. But when there's a special occasion or when we're together and we're, you know, we have we try to make time for it. So yeah, so we still maintain the prayers in the car. Every time we leave, we have our set of prayers. Uh, if we can, if the trip is long, nakakarosary kami. Tapos um, in every every meal time we pray. Tapos Sundays we have uh, the Lord's Day. Uh, Saturday evening we try to do the Lord's Day, and then they do their own. Uh, Thanksgiving prayer for the blessings of the week, and then we close that on Sunday. Okay, patapos na po tayo. So, sabi in Proverbs, train up a child in the way that he should go, and even when he is old, he will not depart from it. So, naniniwala ko kami dito, brothers and sisters, kasi hanggang ngayon nakikita po namin yung bunga nung paparaan ng aming pagpapalaki sa kanila. Even now that they are uh, old and they're no longer with us, the two and the three are really may financial independence na po sila, they make their own decisions, uh, they continue to be grounded in the virtues and the values that we taught them. Kaya lang, syempre, you need to be vigilant. No? We need to be uh, pero hindi po namin na magagawa yun ngayon ng in an effective way kung hindi po namin inumpisahan yun nung bata pa sila. So nagbunga na po yung mga yan. Kasi ngayon nga, kahit malalaki sila, we continue to dialogue. We, and we don't lo lose any opportunity to talk about our faith. Uh, because now more than ever, as they prepare their that, that they remember how they were raised to put the Lord first before anything else, to exhibit faith, to manifest faith, faith, and to also see where the Lord works in your life. So kahit na po sila malalaki na, uh, some time ago, nung kami po ni Louie, we got into a near accident somewhere here in uh, Pansol. The very next time na meron po kaming family reunion, nandun yung aking manugang na lalaki, nandun yung aking manugang na babae, I spoke to them. I spoke to all seven of them and I said, we live by God's grace alone. So, you could have heard the news or the SMS that your mom and your dad are gone. And what does that mean? And so let me share with you, sabi ko, as your parents, now that you're grown and you're bringing on your own lives forward, how important it is to hang on to the Lord because we hang on on His grace alone. We live and die by His pleasure. And it's not ours to control, it's up to Him as He wills. But it's important that as we journey together with Him, we recognize the important role that He plays in our lives. So, I talk to them that way because that's my responsibility as a parent, even if they're no longer three, four, five, six, or seven years old. Because when I look back, I will say, Ano pamamana ng anak ko sa apu ko kung ang pamamana ko sa kanya ay kwentuhan lang, at saka kung paano kumita ng maayos, at saka kung paano mag maniguro na maganda ang andar ng sasakyan, which are all good and practical, but I need to teach them first about where they're ultimately headed which is heaven. And I said, if, your mom, if the Lord had decided it's time for mama and papa right then and there, then it's important for you to realize what did I teach you? 
So now, sabi ko, you sit around this table, I'll teach you it's about faith. It's about faith. So I'm talking to my 35-year-old son and his wife, my 31-year-old daughter and her husband, and my three grown children. So we never stop being people who will protect them against outside influence and instead replace that with what good things they can learn. So parenting never stops. It's really 24-7. Even though I am a grandparent. Because eventually, yung pamamana ko sa, sa mga anak namin, yun ang pamamana nila sa kanilang mga anak. So, maybe by way of ending our talk and helping you uh, take away something, is I will leave you some questions for discussion. Bahala na po yung pumili kung gusto yung question number one. Pero maganda kasi yung question number two is, ano yung ating tugon? Yung number one, parang kikilalanin lang natin, ano ba yung nangyayari kahit na po full grown ang ating mga children? Lalo na kung wala pa po silang mga asawa. Maari na tatrabaho na po sila, but it's very important. Or they are, uh, kung tawagin nga natin, is ano ba yun na doctor? Gen Z. No? Yung mga centennials, people who are 23 and below. They're really still, they're really still very, very impressionable. So, siguro, pwede nating Pag nilayan, tapos in our tables, we say, ano nga ba yung nakikita kong negative influences ng society sa aking mga anak at sa aking pamilya? And then more importantly, what have I done to shield and protect them? Mas mahirap na po ngayon kasi nandyan si social media. No? And uh, kahit na maglagay tayo ng parental controls, napakahirap po talaga. And then, para ma-upbuild naman yung ating mga kasama sa mesa is, Let's share what have we done that has worked so that the others can also share, uh, learn from our experience. Okay po ba yun?